They're singing Bethlehemu, which means Bethlehem in, uh, in the native language. And, and uh, that is a kind of a cry, hey everybody, come to Bethlehem and see Christ the Lord, the newborn king. It's a, it's a, a Christmas song. And, um, and today, we're going to be talking about Bethlehem. I'm in the midst of a series that I've been calling Christmas Out of the Box. We've been talking about some of the different iconic images from your Christmas nativity scene. And kind of thinking about them from a different angle. And looking at them differently. And opening up our perspective on what might have been really happening on that first Christmas, what things might have really looked like. So we talked about Mary, what did Mary really go through? We talked about shepherds and what was the real life of a shepherd like? And today we're gonna to talk about Bethlehem. What was real Bethlehem like? We all have the image in our heads about what real Bethlehem was like, right? The sleepy little town, oh, little town of Bethlehem. How still we see the lie. And uh, so it's a, wait, a small village with like a, like whatever the first century equivalent of Motel 6 is, <laughs> with the, uh, the, the no illuminated on the vacancy sign, right? And, and uh, so that, oh, I guess there's no place for us to stay here. And so they had to go and find a barn to stay in. Um, you know, that, that's our, our classic image of what it means to be in, in Bethlehem at the, the day that Jesus was born. Um, Bethlehem today is, uh, is actually a good-sized city, over 28,000 people. They've got big, tall buildings and things like that. Um, and it's just about five miles south of Jerusalem. And this is an interesting thing you might not know. It's actually in a Palestinian area. So most of the people that live in Bethlehem are Palestinians, um, not Jews, even though it's in Israel. And about a third of those Palestinians are actually Christians. Um, and so, um, it's a, a Bethlehem dramatically grew in size in 1948 when Israel became a state and then Palestinians had to find a new place to live. And so a lot of them were moved to Bethlehem. And, uh, and so, uh, so Bethlehem today is really a town full of refugees, people uh, looking for a place to call their own. Uh, that don't really have one, that were forced from their homes, if not within their lifetime, uh, in ancestry. And uh, Bethlehem is a town surrounded on three sides by 25 foot tall walls with uh, an entryway to control the travel of the Palestinian population. That's modern day Bethlehem. So, uh, not so many stables, <laughs> Not so many cattle <laughs> to low so that the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. You know, it, it, it doesn't look like that so much anymore. And if you turn back the clock 2,000 years to that first Christmas in Bethlehem, you find that things were not so different. Now, the town was a lot smaller. Bethlehem truly was a little town um, of about 300 to 1,000 people. It's hard to tell. Um, but that's what they guess based on how many remaining structures there are from that era. So a tiny little village. And, uh, and that's the one that we learn about from the Bible and from archaeology. Um, Jesus' parents, Mary and stepdad Joseph, they were actually forced to go to Bethlehem. You hear about this journey that they take because of the census. Well, because of the census means this is under Roman rule, and when the Romans tell you to do something, you do it. Um, and so they sent every, everyone who could trace their family heritage back to King David had to go to Bethlehem so that they could be counted. And you know why the Romans have to count all the people that are their subjects? So that they know how many soldiers to place around them, and they know how much taxes to take from them. That's why they're counting them. So the fact that they're being counted is directly related to the fact that they are oppressed. So it's not this happy journey, hey, road trip, Bethlehem, let's do this. <laughs> it was something else altogether. It was a sign of the fact that they, that they were living in an occupied land. And that's why they had to go to Bethlehem, uh, because there was a census. And the same goes for all the other people that went to Bethlehem. 
all the other people who were also tracing their family back to David, and that's why there was this influx of people in Bethlehem that first Christmas, and there was no place for Mary and Joseph to stay for the night. And not only for the night, but they probably had to stay there for some time. So, you know, the census process isn't quick, and this is before they could call you on the phone <laughs> and bother you that way. They had to come in person. So, so to get the counting done took a, took a long time. So they were there for some period of time even before Jesus was born. And so Bethlehem is this town overcrowded with people who had been forcibly removed from their homes. Just like it is today, actually. Not a whole lot has changed in those last 2,000 years, come to think of it. But the, there's this town filled with refugees. So, so what do we do with this little town of Bethlehem? Uh, you know, from, from above, it seems like an inconspicuous little dot. But yet, if you're living in Bethlehem, back then or right now, it's this time of fear and upheaval and tension. But isn't that the place where most of us live at one time or another? We all have reasons to be afraid. We all have things that toss our lives about and make them unpredictable. We all have anxiety of one kind of another. You know, we're, we're all refugees, if you think about it. A refugee is someone who's seeking refuge, trying to find a safe place to be. And I think that describes each and every one of us at one point in time or another. Even if your home is a place where you know you can live in safety and security, your internal world might feel a little less secure. And you're seeking refuge of one kind or another. So that makes us all, in one sense or another, refugees like Mary and Joseph and like the people that live in Bethlehem today. But we seek different kind of refuge. Um, maybe we seek refuge from our anxiety. The world around us is just too much for us to handle sometimes and we don't know what to do with ourselves. We need a place that we can belong. Or, or maybe um, we need refuge from loneliness and we feel this uh, nagging sense of isolation even in a room full of crowded people. Maybe we have, uh, need to seek refuge from a sense of inadequacy, that no matter what you do, it's never quite good enough. Or maybe, maybe you need refuge from a sense of emptiness, that no matter how much you buy or consume, no matter how many uh, parties you go to, or what you do with your days and with your nights, there's this longing that still exists. There's a void. And there are lots of different places you can go for an answer. There are lots of places you can go to find a home, to find a place of refuge. Um, and I'm going to suggest just one to you today. <coughs> go to Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem and see Christ the Lord, the newborn king. See, in Bethlehem, God comes to meet us at a very real place on a very real map. And you can say, it was right here on this day, at this place, God changed things. God has geography now. Instead of just being this idea or this floating spirit somewhere. God has a time and a place where God is most real. God comes to us in a time and in a place to be our refuge on our own terms uh, in this broken, broken and backward world that we find ourselves in. And just like the Bethlehem of old and the Bethlehem today, our, our lives are full of confusion and frustration but just like that first Christmas, 
the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Just like at that first Christmas where God came to be real, to meet us where we were at, God showed up. I believe that God can show up for you. God can show up in inexplicable, mysterious ways within you, as you open your heart to the life of faith, and God can show up in very real, tangible ways uh, in the faces and the people seated around you right now. That's what Northern Light exists to do, is to create moments when God can meet us in these mysterious spiritual ways and to create a community where God can meet you in tangible ways. So that's my invitation for you tonight. If you feel like you're a refugee of one sort or another, maybe your home is safe, but your spirit is broken, or maybe your home is not safe. We want to be the stable where you find refuge. We want to offer that to you, uh, not for our own benefit, but because that is exactly what God does for us. Uh, as the band comes up, Please pray with me. God, we come to you today um, lost and searching, and we, uh, we ask that you would come and meet us. There was a, a point in history when you arrived in the person of Jesus, and we look back on that day with wonder, and we ask that you would come and meet with us today at this point in history too, so that all of us can look back on this day with wonder and say, God was there. Embrace us with your love and help us to be moved by your spirit to lead lives of joy and peace and all those things that we celebrate at Christmas. May they be realized today. <laughs>